It's time to work on finding the surface area and volume of prisms. Here we go. First of all, we have a rectangular prism here. And we need to draw the net. A net is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. So we can just say a 2D drawing of a 3D object. Okay, so a net is flat and on paper, but if you were to fold it and create a three-dimensional object out of it, then that would be a prism. Okay, net is 2D, prism is 3D. Got it? Here we go. So the 3D object is the prism, the 2D is the net. So, here we go. I'm going to draw the net. You have to kind of be able to picture it unfolding, right? This back side is going to fold down. The front side could also fold down. And then we're going to unfold all the sides. So what we end up with is a bell telling us it's time to draw the net. Now your net drawing doesn't have to be anatomically correct and perfect, but it should capture all the possible surfaces of that prism if you unfolded it and laid it flat. Okay, so here we've got the uh, we've got this base here and the other base. Every prism has two bases. And it doesn't matter which is which, right? There's no top and bottom. We just call it two bases. And then we have faces. The faces are, for prisms, those are the rectangles that make up the sides. Okay, you might call them sides, but in our uh, algebra, we're calling it faces. Okay, those are the faces of the prism. These are the bases. Bases are always congruent and parallel. to quote the song Volume by Mega Math, my little band. You should check it out. Uh, that song talks about all of these uh, vocab words, kind of a fun way. So we have the faces, we have the base, and now we're going to find the surface area. <clears throat> okay, and we should also keep in mind here, because you'll be dealing with triangles, pentagons, trapezoids, other types of uh, bases. And the way you know how many, how many faces a prism has is just count the number of sides for the base, right? One, two, three, four sides for the base, so therefore I'm going to have four faces. This helps you keep track of all the sub-problems you're going to do. Okay, so to find the surface area, first I need to uh, translate all my measurements here. There's a four... I'm going to get rid of these numbers so they don't confuse us with measurements. Okay. Four. Uh, we had a five going over here. Right? If I unfolded that, you see the five over here. And then the six is the long side of everything. So with those three measurements, we can actually find the area of all six of these items. Okay? So six goes all the way across. It's six tall all the way across. So I'm going to go 6 times 4 for 24 there. Since I have a 5 here, and these edges match up, when I fold them, this 5 would match over here, so that becomes a 5. And it would also match over here. If I folded this together, you see how these two edges match? Okay. And then this 4 would also be over here. If I folded these up over the top, up here would be the 4, and that's where I got that one. Okay, so I have 6 times 5 is 30, just like a game of Battleship here. We just match them up. 6 times 5, or a multiplication table. 6 times 4 is 24. 5 times 4 is 20, and 20. Okay, so there's all the areas of the different surfaces and I want to point out a few things to you here. 
first of all, once you find the area of one of the bases, you've got the area of both, okay? Since they're congruent, you only need to do that calculation one time. So once I did the 20 here, automatically we know this is going to be a 20. If you're supposed to show your work for both, you can just show, hey, this was 5 times 4, and you draw an arrow up here, because you're showing the work for two things at the same time. Okay, another thing to observe here is if I have this face over here, which we see was 30, and then on the back side here, this invisible face we can't see, that's also a 30, because when we're dealing with a rectangle that has parallel sides, equal sides over here, if I have a 30 over here, the back side here is going to be congruent with that. This will only be true for rectangles, but it's important to remember. So once I figure out this 30, I'm just going to copy it over here, which is the same thing I did with this 24. Okay, so we did three calculations for six answers. Now to find the surface area, we simply add all those answers together. I'm just doing them in order. You can do whatever order you want. You could group the 30s and the 24s together. So I've got base, base, and then these are the four faces. Face 1, face 2, face 3, and face number 4. Okay, if this was a triangle, you'd only have three faces. Add all these together. 54 and 54 is 108, plus 40 is 148. Please check me on a calculator. I've been known to make mistakes. Let's call these centimeters. Since we're dealing with area, two-dimensional. Area is a two-dimensional concept, so the two goes there. That's how you know what exponent to use. Now we're going to find the volume. Volume, as you remember, is area of the base times the height. We already have the area of a base right here, don't we? Okay, so we're going to bring that down here and multiply by how tall this is. There's the height. I'm going to slide up here. All right, this is centimeters cubed. Volume is measured in three dimensions, and here's one way you can keep track of that. Because look, I'm, I'm measuring two things here, and you might think, oh, that's a two-dimensional object. But you have to remember that this 20 we got by doing 4 times 5, right? So we, we had two dimensions, which was the area, then we added the height. So we've got three dimensions here. which is area, which is two of the dimensions, and height, which is the third dimension. Okay, therefore we use a little three there and we call it cubic centimeters. Whew, that was a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in a short amount of time on a small piece of paper. You need a chance to practice this, okay? Let me zoom out so we can capture the whole thing, hopefully. There we go. You could pause it right there and take a look at this whole thing. And what we're going to do next is I'm going to give you a sample problem to work on. And I'm going to put that on a separate video. Okay. And then we'll go from there. All right. So look for the second video in this series. And I'll see you soon with more surface area and volume and nets. Woo!